Welcome to this basic haircut tutorial. My name is Michael Holm, I've been cutting hair for 20 years and I'm gonna break down how to cut a simple men's haircut for you in this video. So we're starting out with a number two on the clipper. Let's get rid of the small numbers, they're quite hard to work with. Bigger numbers are probably better. So I'm putting a two on, but my client wants a two and a half, slightly longer than a two. So if I push the lever forward, that gives me that length. The single most important thing I ever learned in barbering was to go straight up with the clipper. So when we go up, straight up the side of the head, the head has a bulge on it at the side, which we call the parietal ridge. It's this bone that goes over the top. So let's just go straight up and glide off that bone. It would be a mistake to round over the parietal ridge onto the top of the head with the clipper. Let's try and avoid that. As you can see, when you get to the ear, you sometimes have to angle in a little bit, but always when you get to that parietal ridge, you want to be gliding off. So even if you do have to go at a slight angle, just glide off. So back again, straight up off the parietal ridge. This technique may seem nerve wracking at first, but just do it, take your time, concentrate on what you're doing and just glide straight up with the clipper. Now at the back of the head, continue to go straight up. I'm gonna give you a little tip here though, as we start to get round towards the back, there is another ridge, it's called the occipital ridge. It's part of the occipital bone and it's the bit that protrudes the most from the back of your head. So we need to pay attention to that and glide up off of that. It's a slight angle, rather than straight up, we just go up at a slight angle. You don't want to go up and obliterate the crown Okay, your client is the king and he must wear a crown. Always remember that. So let's go up and try and not destroy the crown. We can scissor cut that later. Whoa, what the hell's that? <laughs> okay, so you can see I haven't gone into the crown and that's left me with this bulge that's sticking out, but that's okay because I'm gonna deal with that when we get to the scissor work. You're just watching the fundamental technique here. Now, I've been doing this for 20 years. I use this technique every single day. This is very easy to learn, very easy to use, and you'll notice it almost blends the hair in. To try and get it a little bit cleaner at the bottom, at the back, what I use is a crisscross method where I try to go in different directions against the hair. I don't do this above the occipital bone, just keep it below the occipital bone and down towards the nape of the neck. So crisscross, go against the grain. You can see that sometimes the hair kind of grows in towards the middle of the neck. So let's just crisscross on that and try and make sure that we have got it all. So once you've done that, clean all the hair off and continue around to the other side. Just use the same technique to get round to the other side of your client's head. And then we're on to the little clipper work. When I'm doing this, I work from one side round to the other, but I leave the back of the neck until last. So the idea will be just to trim the loose hairs that are sticking out beyond the hairline. I'm using the corner of the clipper to just draw around the ear, only looking for those little hairs that are sticking out and not going into the head hair at all. From the back of the ear, make a straight line down towards the nape of the neck. Now I did say that we will take this a little bit higher at the back of the neck, so it looks kind of stretched out at the moment, but I'm gonna deal with that uh, as we work our way around. I'll go to the other side first, and then I'll come back and we'll lift the whole nape of the neck. So again, just take those loose hairs off around the uh, hairline. You can put your comb in and just lift the hair and run the clipper over it to just soften certain areas. So here I am again with a corner, just drawing around the ear and I'll pull the ear out of the way and just draw around. Remember, don't go too high. 
we don't want our client to look like they've had an operation. So straight line from the back of the ear down towards the nape of the neck. Be very careful not to go inside the hairline. You can tell the difference between neck hair and head hair because the neck hair is a bit softer. So let's just raise all these tails here, okay? We'll raise them up, but I don't want to go inside that hairline. I keep saying that. So here we are, raise it up, and I'm gonna stop about here, and then I'm gonna use my comb and just kinda raise it a little higher than the skin to try and soften the edge. This creates a lovely kind of natural sort of finish to the neck. We don't want to put in just, just a straight line because if you look at the human body um, and the head, there isn't generally straight lines to be seen. Just to soften it ever so slightly, I'm just gonna put a number one on and I'm just gonna just brush the very edge. You don't want to be going in any higher, just a little brush on the edge and then clean that off. Let's get onto the top now. Always cut on wet hair and so what we'll do is we'll section off a guideline and the guideline helps us to cut the entire haircut on top with the scissors. To pick it up, just flip the comb. I call it the comb flip technique. I don't know what anyone else calls it. And we'll cut this, imagine like cutting a mohawk if you want. So comb flip in, work away towards the front. I can see the short hair, I just cut it one side of my fingers. And I'm just gonna work my way towards the front here. There we are. So now I know, once I start cutting the rest of the hair, you're gonna see in a minute just how I figure out how to cut the correct length across the head. Grab a section of hair and lift it up you can see the short hair at the end of my finger, that's from my guideline, and then I have to take the rest of the hair down to the same length as that. So if I work my way forward in sections, that guideline's there for me the whole way to the front. Take a section, I can see the short hair at my fingertips, take it to that length, work my way forward a little bit. By the way, if you're new to cutting hair, I do have a course on Udemy and I'll leave a link in the description. It's a beginner's barber course. It's three hours long and it's a structured course that will take you through various elements of barbering. It's a bit more in depth than my YouTube channel. There is a few free lessons on there. So, you know, even if you just wanna see the free lessons, hit that link in the description for Udemy and you will be able to see them. Okay, on the other side, on the other side, the same principle applies. You'll notice that I have reverted to the comb flip technique on this side because I've already combed all the hair over, so I don't need to drag it over and uh, and pinch it. So just comb flip in; it makes it much quicker. I can uh, just pick up a section, and I can see the short hair right in at the knuckle and cut across to that. This is giving me a nice even length from side to side and all the way from the back to the front. I've had a few people asking me about fringes lately. Now, fringes are tricky. I'm gonna comb it out to the side and we'll deal with that separately from the rest of the top. Once you've cut the top, what I like to do is I like to go around the area of the parietal ridge in the occipital bone and do what I call taking the corners off. So taking the corners off is where you pull the hair out vertical on your fingers and you're looking to cut off any long hair that's sticking out. Um, and this joins up the clippered area and the scissor cut area a little bit better. You remember round at the other side, there was that huge area sticking out. So this is really what I'm dealing with that. I'm just taking all these corners off and when I get round there, that'll just um, be removed. Before you move on round the head, 
just smooth it over. So lift your comb up into the hair and sort of kind of flutter the scissor. We call this scissor over comb, but it's just kind of like using your thumb to sort of flutter the scissor and it will trim off any just tiny little bits that are sticking out. You wouldn't use this technique to take a lot of length off. It's just really a tidying technique. So work your way around. I'll just tidy up on the corner of the occipital bone there and I'm gonna start working around on my corners again. This is one of the probably more enjoyable parts of the haircut is when you start tying it all together. You're bringing the top and the back together. This was this area that was sticking right out, so um, I'll scissor over comb that as well. It sometimes looks like I'm moving my scissors very quickly, but believe me, if you practice that, you know, 10, 10 haircuts down the line, you'll be able to do that very, very easily. Um, it's just such a natural thing. Once you just, once you just get the hang of it, it's pretty easy to do moving scissors fast. And um, it because it's a way of polishing the hair, uh, tying it all together, um, it's quite enjoyable because you see, uh, the really refined haircut starting to happen before your eyes. Whenever you see a barber doing this technique, they always seem to be happy. So on the crown, what we'll do is we'll lift it up and then tilt the fingers out the way a little bit so that they're vertical and just take off any long stuff. We don't want anything hanging over the edge. Crowns can be a very difficult part of a haircut and I do have a, a video which is all about dealing with certain types of crowns and what I'll do is I'll put that link in the description as well if you need any help cutting crowns or you don't understand it. You need to cut them differently for different hair types. So onto the fringe, slide the scissor in slightly behind the fringe and pick some hair up and what we'll do is just trim it to the length that you want. For me, because I had the top cut quite well, I don't really need to make too much of an adjustment. And then I'll pick up the whole fringe on the comb. I'm leaving it relaxed on the comb. This is really important to me. I want to leave the fringe just in a relaxed state. The comb is my guide to keep it straight. So um, I am just using the comb and cutting across it with a very relaxed fringe. But I want to show you something on the other side. This client has like a cow's lick. This is where the hair kind of splits and cutting it on the comb like that's really important. Watch this. It just, once I've cut across, it's just relaxed. It's straight. Now, if you were to pick all that up, that hair would be longer because it has a curve to go around. But because I've done, I've cut the hair like that, it leaves it straight when it's lying on his forehead naturally. This is why I, prefer not to put tension on the fringe. That means pull it down with my fingers. I prefer it if the fringe is just relaxed and trim it in its natural state. Time to give the haircut a little dry off. Now, I'd recommend you have a look at it as you're drying it off, just in case you need to make any adjustments. So that's our basic gent scissor cut complete. We've done the two and a half on the sides, trimmed around the edges, scissor cut the top and left the fringe natural, used that natural technique on the front. If you've got any questions about this haircut, put it in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer or help you out with any questions that you have. 
If you want to see more from me, hit subscribe. Until next time, good luck with your basic gents haircuts.